fighting in Myanmar has grown more deadly day by day. According to data by Myanmar's pro-democracy shadow government, aerial attacks by the junta have been intensifying since the coup. For the past year, there were 268 airstrikes, including 190 targeting civilians. Newsroom Tokyo has been collecting open source and other footage of the attacks. We analyzed the material together with the international investigative group Myanmar Witness. We found the junta has been building up its air force with support from Russia. The Myanmar junta bombed this school in the northwestern region of Zagaing in September. At least 12 people, including children, were killed. Civilians are struggling with their injuries and the trauma. The attack started the instant I told the children to take cover. As I was sheltering a terrified girl, I got hit in my thigh. A nighttime concert in the northernmost state of Kachin was another target. Reports say at least 50 were killed. The ethnic armed organization in Kachin put the death toll at 62. The military claims it was a necessary operation against insurgents. It denies any civilian casualties. But a filmmaker who has covered Kachin since the coup in 2021 says the venue was no more than a gathering place for local citizens. <laughs> The target was like a bazaar or a market. It was a place where ordinary people went about their lives. Elsewhere, in southeastern Cotton State, a midnight airstrike burned a monastery to the ground. More than 40 children living there managed to evacuate, but they've now lost their home. Our analysis shows that Myanmar's Air Force has been beefing up with the help of Russia. This type of military aircraft has been frequently spotted around attack targets since April. Leone Hadavi is a weapons analyst at Myanmar Witness. He identified the plane as a Yak-130 a Russian-built training and light combat jet. It's a newer aircraft. It's very maneuverable. It's very flexible. Until the sighting of the Yak-130, the military was known mostly to rely on the Chinese-made K-8. Hadavi says the Russian jet is a more high-performance aircraft. The Yak has a payload of 3,000 kilograms distributed over um, nine hard points, um, while the, the K-8 has a total payload of less than 1,000 kilograms, uh, over five hard points, over five pylons. So that's a huge difference. The junta's arsenal is expanding. At the anniversary ceremony of the Myanmar Air Force in December 2021, the generals unveiled and commissioned six new Yak-130s. The jets in this footage are numbered from 1815 to 1820. The Yak-130s seen at the first ever commissioning ceremony were numbered from 1801, suggesting there are a total of 20 Yak-130s in service. The scenery in this footage of a Russian jet indicates it was filmed in Cotton State, near the northern border with Thailand. From the video, Myanmar witness analysts confirmed that 36 unguided air-to-ground rockets were fired by the Yak-130. Hadavi points out how dangerous the weapons are. Because... Uh, these weaponry are not very technologically advanced when it comes to the targeting system, means that whether it's their intention or not, their final 
the final results would be a lot of damage and casualties among the civilian uh, population and property. This is Le Keiko, a town in Cotton State. The video was posted by an ethnic armed group. Smoke rises from the blue buildings. Housing for people displaced by the conflict has been built here. It is believed this was the intended target. A day after the video was released, there was another post showing the spent casings allegedly found at the same location. Haddavi identified them as 23 millimeter rounds. We reached out to a high-ranking officer of an ethnic armed group. He's been fighting for cotton autonomy for the past 30 years. He says damage from airstrikes has recently increased significantly. A month ago in southeastern Kokorek, the jets circled 50 times a day on reconnaissance before four came back to attack. When there is an airstrike, it's not so much our soldiers who suffer, it's the villagers who take more casualties. That's how they do things. It's intimidation. What's more, in mid-October, postings on social media for the first time showed an advanced fighter jet allegedly flying above Myanmar. It was claimed to be a Russian-made Sukhoi-30. Then, around the same time, NHK independently obtained photographs of a Sukhoi-30 allegedly taken in Myanmar. Myanmar witness concluded the plane was most likely on a training exercise because it was unarmed. On the same day, the group's satellite analysis of the Air Force Base also confirmed one Sukhoi-30 jet on the tarmac, next to recently built hangars. For the Sukhoi-30, the payload is even increased. It would be 8,000 kilograms on 12 hard points against 3,000 kilograms on nine hard points for the Yak. Separately, an independent Myanmar media outlet says that two Sukhoi-30s arrived for the first time from Russia in March. According to Russia's state-owned media, Russia's defense minister reportedly said that Moscow would supply Myanmar with six Sukhoi-30 aircraft. So it is likely the junta will receive another four of the jets, according to the order placed in 2018. Our analysis reveals that the Myanmar military has been clearly upgrading its air power with long-term Russian support. The K-8 is a basic trainer jet. The uh, Yak-130 is an advanced trainer jet designed to train fighter pilots for fourth and fifth generation fighter jets. The Sukhoi-30 is a fourth generation fighter jet. We are expecting an increase of the use of aircraft, which is also why Myanmar Witness is increasing the attention on the monitoring and analysis of Myanmar Air Force, the Myanmar Air Force and their uh, activity. The United Nations Refugee Agency estimates more than 1.1 million people are internally displaced in Myanmar since the coup. The harm inflicted upon children is particularly severe. Life in the camps is the same as if they were under house arrest. People cannot leave, so there are shortages of everything. We want to work together to return refugees and citizens to their own villages. Amid this worsening situation, leaders of ASEAN gathered for a summit but they failed to set a deadline to implement the peace plan that the junta had agreed to last year. An expert on human rights and civil conflicts, including Myanmar's, warns of the potential peril 
if the world community continues to ignore the crisis. We need more states to come out strongly and say that they're going to stand on the right side of history. If you look back at this historically, when we think of the, the 1990s, for example, I think all countries feel a deep shame that things like the genocide in Rwanda was able to happen without anybody doing anything, or that the atrocities that took place in Yugoslavia for so long before anyone in the international community did anything. Well, it's a, I think it's a deep shame to the international community now that Myanmar joins that list of countries where atrocities have taken place, and it seems like the international community, some sections have done things, but there needs to be more done across the entire international community to hold this criminal regime accountable for the atrocities that they are committing. In September, junta chief General Min Aung Hlaing traveled to Russia to meet with President Putin to discuss military and economic cooperation. The general praised on Putin as a global leader for stability and control. On Monday, the general received a visit by Russia's Minister of Economic Development to discuss Myanmar-Russia ties. With civilians increasingly threatened by the military's growing arsenal, the question about Myanmar remains. How long can the rest of the world stand by and watch?